I'm going to go ahead and get started here today. I want to thank you for joining live, or if you decided to watch this later for other reasons, welcome either way. Today, I have a guest co-host with me, Stephanie Weaver. She's an artist, instructor, and blogger, and she's passionate about sharing and creating art with heart for animals, and I love that about her. I think so many people do that just relate to animals and their pets, and she's also a does a pet portraiture among the other things that she creates with her art. And she's additionally, besides being an artist, is the founder of the Positive Painters Online Artist Community. And this is a group of color obsessed painters who want to grow their art skills and business skills, somewhat similar to what we're doing here in the art marketing toolkit, but obviously she has her own flavor of how to do that. And today, She's going to talk to us about everything that you need to know before you set up an Etsy shop. And I want to say thank you for taking the time to join us today and uh, for sharing this information with us, Stephanie. And I'm as eager to learn about this as anybody because I think it would be valuable for me to be more aware and help people in my group as they have questions about Etsy, which is, I think, a really important to place to have your art these days. So mm -hmm. take it away. All right. I actually have a slide deck for you guys and a handout at the end. Excellent. So I guess, uh, Barney, I can send that to you so that you can have it um, to share. Yeah, I can, I can upload it into uh, and make it available to um, the art marketing toolkit members and actually the art marketing, um, the people on the page, my art marketing page. So. All right. So I was kind of get started. I know we've got a lot to kind of cover, actually. So um, this is like Barney was saying, everything that you need to know before you actually start an Etsy shop. So I kind of came to this as a result of bumbling way, my way through it uh, myself. And I have a, a kind of an intense desire to help other people not have to struggle <laughs> and not have to uh, go through all this tribal knowledge that other people have gain gained and, um, you know, are kind of holding close to their heart. So I'm a big sharer. So I'm going to share a bunch of things with you guys today. So number one is if you ever come to any of my lunch and learns, I'm going to say this every single time. Um, and there's an old Chinese proverb that says a vision without action is a dream and an action without vision is a nightmare. And if you, same thing applies with Etsy. If you don't know where you're going, you're gonna bumble your way through it and stub some toes and it's just gonna be a nightmare. So we're gonna make that easy. That's the plan for today. Okay, so the problem is you have a bunch of handmade items, maybe paintings, photographs, um, any type of artwork that you want to sell, but aren't sure if number one, if Etsy is the right solution for you. Two, what is needed to get started and three, and once you get started, how do you stay organized? And we might not get to that third one today. It depends on how fast I talk. So, <laughs> um, so let's just kind of go ahead and start with the decision process. Is Etsy even the right solution for you? So I'm gonna talk through that and go through some of the pros and cons. So this was actually a process that I go through with pretty much everything that I, I do. Is I know what I want and kind of define the requirements and then evaluate the pros and cons and do all the research kind of behind it. So I'm gonna share with you that research. One of the pros that I saw is that it is extremely low cost entry. Um, it's like 20 cents per product for four months of listing it onto Etsy. And when I compared that to other platforms that are kind of out of the box e-commerce platforms like Squarespace, Wix and Shopify, what I noticed is that in order to get this price that they charge $18 a month, I could load 360 items onto my Etsy shop. Wow. And I'm not even at 200 yet. And the baseline for a good working shop is 200 items. So I'm not even here yet. And I've been on Etsy for probably about almost a year now. Wow. Um, where so, did you, uh, the baseline, where did that? That number, that's interesting. Where did that 200 come from? Is that uh, something from Etsy or? It's uh, probably some other articles that I read. I am kind of an avid reader and I'm not very good with remembering names. I so. 
I'm the same way. I get bits and pieces and don't ask me how I know that. Well, and there's, um, I think the lady was in Australia that I, I read it from, and she also said not only 200, but then once you get 200 items, once you're selling 200 pieces, then you can even segment into a separate Etsy shop. So for example, maybe you want to dedicate one particular Etsy shop to a particular product line, like original artwork, and then create your other Etsy shop for the prints. But that's at a certain segment when you're over 200 sales and you kind of got your wheels and your processes rolling. But for now, you know, it, it takes a while to get 200 pieces and you'll see why. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and then along with all of this, I also kind of evaluated everybody has uh, processing fees. So even Etsy, they charge 5%, if I remember correctly, uh, per transaction, plus I think 30 cents, and then you even have PayPal. All these other guys do the same thing. So you're not gonna save yourself in processing time. And I also evaluated, um, I had, had a WordPress site and looked at adding WooCommerce and the cost alone for doing those, one, it was a lot of time, two, it was additional fee. If I remember right, WooCommerce was like maybe 99 to 199. It's been a while since I looked at that. It seemed to me the last time I checked that if you got all of the plugins that you needed with WooCommerce, it was gonna run you somewhere close to 300 bucks a year. It wasn't cheap. Mm -hmm. and that's just for their license to the products, you still have to go in and set them up and make them all work together and- SEO friendly, advertise them, you got the whole job. Why anybody would want to do that to themselves when you can go get a Squarespace, Etsy, or, or um, Shopify account is beyond me, but- um, Oh, I tried little, it. <laughs> I mean, WooCommerce does give you a tremendous amount of, of flexibility, maybe more so than other you know, platforms that have limitations on templates or whatnot, but I would gladly give up the control not to worry about the million other things that, that come into play when you have WooCommerce. Um, Most definitely. You know, <laughs> WordPress, uh, data, databases, security, plugins, updates, hosting. It's it's a lot You're to juggle. You're talking about five slides ahead. No, I'm, just <laughs> I'm sorry, I've done my, I apologize. You're welcome. No, that's yeah. great. Um, this is your, your yeah. webinar, not mine. <laughs> Go for it. So one of the other pros is that there's no need for additional website. And that's why we're talking about like, I don't know, if all you want to do is just create and sell and maybe blog a little, um, it's a great solution. It's a simple setup. Like Barney was hitting on, there's no need for uh, coding. There's no need to hire external web developers, hosting providers, plugins, widgets, etc. So it's just simple go type thing. Um, and it's also a trusted global marketplace for handmade and unique crafts and artwork. Um, the other thing that I really like about it is it is SEO and keyword based marketing. And so just in case um, not familiar with what SEO is, it's basically a way to um, search for words and have your information pop up. So if you go to Google, for example, and type in uh, Rhode Island Red Rooster artwork, which is pretty specific, you'll uh, see up at the top, you know, Amazon, Etsy, and probably even uh, like Pinterest shopping images. That's your SEO. And that's why one of the many reasons I love them, because if you do that with your WooCommerce, for example, and you've got those right keywords in there, your domain authority is so far down in comparison to Amazon, Etsy, and all those folks that you're not even going to show up up there. So um, along with that, you don't have to pay to play. So I've also looked at, you know, Facebook has a shopping cart kind of provider type thing. They want you to pay to play. Um, you don't have to do that here. It is if you've got good content, good keywords, you will gain an audience. Um, so the kind of the pros, and I'm gonna hit the cons, is uh, low cost entry, no need for additional website, and has integrated tools, and I'm gonna go through that as well. It's a simple setup, global marketplace, and SEO-based marketing. 
some of the cons. So if you already have a website, this is an additional cost. Um, and then again, you kind of got to balance those costs out. Is it going to be worth it to you to have WooCommerce and have that total control within your website? Um, if you have Shopify, is it going to be uh, worth it for you to add your pieces in there? Probably yes. Um, but it depends again on your business goals. Shopify, that's kind of in your area. If you're in Etsy, you're getting additional exposure to people that you might not have had exposure to before. So um, that's kind of something you got to figure out. Um, let's see. The next one is you are building your castle on rented land. So um, Barney and I've had conversations about Facebook, and I'm not a Facebook fan, and, and because of this reason right here. And Etsy is also that way. You're building your shop on rented land. And so if you break rules, their rules, then they can shut you down. If you do copyright infringements, they can shut you down. So you just have to be cognizant and legal <laughs> in order to stay on their environment um, and follow the rules. Even that can get you, even I see it all the time, the bans on Facebook of accounts where people can't figure out what they did wrong. They yeah. know they've, they've, they've abided by the rules in every way they can possibly imagine. And still Facebook has banned their account and won't even talk to them to let them know. Yeah. Sorry, you, you violated the rules, but we can't tell you which rule you violated. Yeah. I don't know anybody that's had that problem with Etsy. Um, that was just kind of randomly shut down. I know uh, a couple people were shut down and they should have been rightly so. Um, I think it was a decent, was it DCMA or DMC? DCMA, DMCA. Yeah, right. Yeah, um, and so they weren't legal, you know. Bye, bye. Um, <laughs> but the other kind of pro to that is because you're building your castle on rented land, they take care of all the, the taxes and the government issues and regulations like, um, you know, the the recent EU GDPR. Right. I don't have to worry about that. Um, I like that. This way I just get to create, sell, woo <laughs> I like it. Uh, a other con is it does lessen domain authority by diverting traffic. So I pay particular attention, a lot of attention to SEO and domain authority because I'm trying to move up in the world. Um, <laughs> And by moving my traffic off to Etsy, it is kind of lessening the, the people staying on my site and moving around. But there are kind of tricks to that. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that later. So, so kind of pros and cons. Um, cons, again, if you already have a website, is additional costs. You are building a castle on rented land and can lessen your domain authority. So balance those pros and cons however you will. <laughs> How do you, uh, is, is this your primary, is Etsy your primary form of e-commerce or are you, do you have any other way of selling online other than through Etsy at this point? No, not at this point. Um, I used to have WooCommerce and um, Etsy and what I would do is segment them out. So anything that was $200 and less, I used Etsy. Anything that was greater, I used my site because the way that I was segmenting them is um, I wanted them the $200 or more to be on my email list, kind of my control, my, you know, communication sure. piece, $200 and less, they're probably not likely to continue to buy, but if they are, they're going to come to my site. Got it. Okay. And now it's all, you've just currently let it all, let Etsy handle all your e-commerce. Yep, I went simplified uh, with my website. I'm no longer on WordPress. I'm using Kajabi. And with Kajabi, it integrates with Shopify. And I just didn't see a need in doing something else, especially when I did the cost comparison. It just didn't make sense for me to do that. For those who don't know what Kajabi is, I'll just put it in the, uh, the name of it. It's K-A-J-A-B-I. And you're welcome to look it up if you want to. It's in the chat. Love Kajabi, love, love, love. <laughs> so, and there's a, there is an uh, unsolicited testimonial from somebody who absolutely loves Kajabi. It's, it's pretty much an all-in-one inclusive um, e-commerce marketing. I think you can even build schools on it. Am I right? Yeah, 
I've got my online artist community on it, all my courses, and there's an app so everybody can be mobile and learn on the go and communicate with community on the go. And then in addition to that, do you, it'll manage all of your email marketing as well, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was that's enabled me to get rid of ConvertKit. So it just simplifies. Yeah, so if you're spending, you know, um, if you've reached the limit on ConvertKit of 1000 and you're up to whatever it is, $29 a month, that mm -hmm. goes a long way towards whatever the monthly fee is for Kajabi. So definitely something to think about. Yeah, if you guys ever want to like a tour of Kajabi, I am more than happy to show you because uh, it took me two weeks to implement it, and um, and I didn't want to, to be honest with you. I did not want to. Change is hard. <laughs> yeah, it was well worth it. Like, I, I even bought a cake because it was like a sheet cake. I was celebrating so much. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Thanks, thanks for those insights. Plural moments are going to happen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so before you even kind of move to Etsy, I, I kind of showed you my decision process here. And kind of the key question is, do you really want to only create and sell and kind of what's important to you? And um, if you like what you hear, that's what we're gonna take a look at. And so when you, before you ever get into Etsy and actually click the little button that says, start my shop or something like that. I'm not sure what it says anymore, but before you ever do that, you have to get certain things in place. And this is something that I didn't know. If you actually look at my Etsy shop, it says I started it started in like 2017, 2018. That's not true. That's when I created the account. I didn't actually start using it until last year um, or 2019. Yeah, one of those years. And it was one of those things like, I didn't know I needed all this stuff in place and nobody said anything I needed it all in place. And I only came to it in March of 20, yeah, 2019 because um, I was with a group of another art, a group of artists and we were revisiting Etsy and we were sitting there in a huddle, all of us opening up our Etsy shops at once. And the girl next to me, um, she didn't have her products ready and didn't have any of this stuff ready and so she was doing everything on the fly and she actually um her and her husband are selling um cutting boards and so she didn't have any product images or anything so she went to pixabay and just grabbed a an image of a piece of wood that was like this big and put it in the product just so she could finish opening up her shop end of the little session she forgot all about it a week later she gets a sell notification that somebody bought the little fake piece of wood for $1.99. So, <laughs> so <laughs> she quickly learned how to do a refund and apologize to the client. <laughs> so these things are kind of important to have before you ever get started. Um, and we're gonna go through really the first um, four and then the other five, six, and seven. These are uh, nice to have, and I recommend that you start with your templates. And as you do your research, you're gonna build those up. And like I said, I'm gonna give you guys a workbook that will walk you through these things and then you can fill it out. And so when you come to your Etsy shop, you've got everything prepared. Um, and the first thing we're gonna talk about is your shop name. So the shop name, and this is what mine kind of looks like, um, it appears in multiple places. The Art for Paws, that's me because I, I donate 10% to nonprofit animal welfare organizations of everything that I do. Um, that's and, even if it's not pet pardon? related. It's that's for all everything, not just yeah. pet. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I have an end vision of exactly what I want to do um, with my community. There's, uh, I'm taking portions of the sales because I have an end goal of um, creating something that I've got to um, the word trademark copyright right stuff with. Um, Brand. animal cruelty that's that's great it's very it's getting it, there. it says a lot about you <laughs> love the animals um so with your shop name it does need to be unique and so you got to do that a little bit of research and you go into etsy and you just start taping the name 
or um, you know, coming up with multiple ideas of what you want for your name. Back in the day, you weren't allowed to change your name, but today you can. And I think you have to, a, a limitation on the number of changes that you can have here. But the nice thing is nowadays is you can change this and your old name will still be kind of quote taken and cannot be reused. So if you do need to rebrand, they do have that ability to do that and everything routes to your page correctly. So that's really nice. That's something they changed probably about two years ago. Um, your shop title. So this is like a brief description. And so it'll appear in two places. So you'll have it up in your tab and then also right below your name. So that's something you just kind of come up with. And as you're doing your research, you'll, you'll start to kind of see what people are using and come up with things. Um, and again, all this is what you need before you start your shop. Um, you'll need your visual aspects, which are your banner, logo, and image of you. So like the banner, I made this in Canva. Um, logo, um, and then just image of you. You can put, if you don't have a logo and you don't wanna put your image, just put your artwork. Um, what I found is um, Etsy is primarily a search engine. So uh, your SEO is what matters. Rarely do people actually go to your homepage unless you direct them there. Message to buyers. Is this thing in, in anybody else's ways or just mine? Um, what, when you say this thing? Never mind, I moved it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, so you answered the question, got it. <laughs> um, so. Also message to buyers. So you heard me talk a little bit about this before where I wanted the, to have an engagement with my customers and to be able to um, bring them into my email, my e-commerce, my email marketing activities. Message to buyers is a great place to do this. Um, so in addition to providing the information about processing time, shipping time, and then if you do customization and things like that, you can also include a link to your newsletter. <clears throat> in the message to buyers, um, if you do customization to your pieces, so say for example, you, you, you're a photographer, I'll take Lee for example, and maybe he adds um, options to his word, uh, to his um, photography, like, you know, it's a crystal, um, be clear on your goals. You know, that might be one little phrase or um, stay sharp. That might be another little phrase. A customization would allow them to choose what you would put on their artwork, for example. So if you do have that customization or if you do embroidery work and they say, you know, love Tyler, something, I don't know. And, but you want to kind of put in that message to the buyer you know, please review your uh, customization and ensure it is 100% accurate. If there are any concerns, please contact me and we can um, correct it before work begins. And so that way it's just like a nice little extra touch so they can get to know, like, and trust you a little bit more. Okay. Um, okay. Shop announcements. So this is an optional section and I find it particularly handy this past year with COVID because COVID really messed up all of the shipping durations. <laughs> because uh, countries rent would run out of products that you were using. I do print on demand and that's a whole, like if you go to my website, stephanieartist.com, um, there's a four day free challenge where I walk you through how to do print on demand with products. And I use a company called Guten and um, I use Guten and Printify, but I prefer Guten over everybody. How do you uh, spell Guten? Is that like Gutenberg? It's uh, I'm, no, no, actually it's a G O O T E N. Okay. And is that's a, it's a print on demand option. Yeah, print on demand. So what you'll do with them is in short, you create your images and you upload them to um, their uh, portal. 
and you select the, the products that you want it to be created on and the sizes and all of that. And then it actually integrates directly with Etsy. So wow. like, for example, last night I sold two pillows and it was great. Oh. You know, you hear Etsy has a little app and it literally goes cha-ching. And <laughs> so nice. um, when I sold two pillows, I checked this morning, it's already in production and they handle the shipping. I don't have to do anything. I didn't even know about Guten. I, I've seen so many others like Printify and Printful, uh, but Guten's a new one on me. So that's cool. Good to know. Yeah. About. Yeah. They, um, when you go through the um, great passive income with print on demand four day challenge, uh, there's a link in there that they gave me because they came to our positive painter community for two lunch and learns where we talked about print on demand. And then I did a round table discussion with us just to, you know, address any questions, concerns. But um, I know since then um, they have limited the number of artists or, or vendors who access them. But for people who go through this community, they gave me a special link so that we don't have to have said that we sell hundred products a month because most of us don't. Oh, okay. So they are weeding out low volume users to some extent, but you've got a little work around for it. Yeah. Yeah. They, um, they did that for, for us. I'm sure they'll do it for others, but they did it for us. Um, because I just, I help them, they help me. And, um, the more people that I can tell about them and this opportunity, I think it just works out better for everybody because we're just, we all want to make money. <laughs> right. We all want to get our artwork out. Yeah. <laughs> so. it's, it's interesting that they would uh, even, you know, put a limitation on it. And I, I guess they know what they're doing. But well, they, did it, they did it about November of last year. And I know why they did it. Because they Christmas season, um, everybody's going nuts. You combine that with the shipping delays. And, you know, people are wanting print on demand. You got products that need to be shipped from China to the U.S. to be printed on in some cases. So I, they, I think they had to. I got it. They, they were being overrun with trying to onboard newbies who weren't going to really give them any volume, but yeah. still consume a lot of resources to just handle them. Makes yeah. sense. But they, they, like I said, they um, are working with us small artists so that we can you know, make a living, make a life. That's cool. I'm yeah, I'm, I was just actually on a call with them right before this because um, they're doing an article about how to digitize your artwork and okay. tips and tricks on that. So yeah, follow their blog, blog guten.com. So yeah, shop announcement. <laughs> so it's a great place to, you know, kind of relay anything that's special kind of going on. Maybe you got to sell, maybe you got a new product line, maybe you got shipping delays, all that stuff. Um, the shipping policies, Etsy has templates. And what I recommend for the shipping policies and return policies is start with their templates. But when you do your research, find the little nuggets of that other people that are kind of in your niche that you like, that they say. So for example, some people will say that they don't offer returns. Some will say like they do it within 30 days. Um, so you just kind of figure out what you want to do there. Um, it's up to you, but start with their proven template. I always like the idea of uh, lining up on someone else's putt. If they've had a <laughs> shop for a while and they've got their rules set a certain way, it's probably out of experience. They, oh, yeah. they learned the hard way. Yep. Mm. All right, the overall product configuration. So once you actually get in there, um, before you actually even click in there, we still actually need to make your products in the product images, right? Um, so we're gonna talk about keyword research, product images, product title, description, and price. These first two, this is where we're gonna spend our time. Keyword research and product images. The result of the these two pieces of information that I'm going to research will drive the title description and price. 
So keyword research, and we're going to do a little bit of a bouncing out of here too. Um, the keyword research, you can use the keywords in tags, titles, categories, and attributes. And I use several research tools. There's Etsy, Uber Suggest, and eRank. eRank is actually one that's integrated with Etsy. I find that particular tool helpful after I've created the product um, because it'll kind of rank it and show potential alternatives to, that would work better. Um, Etsy is a great place to look just when you're starting to get ideas. And I'm going to take you through that. Uber Suggest, um, are you familiar with Uber Suggest? Yes, that's uh, Neil Patel's business. Yes. I love his stuff. Okay. So um, I'm going to kind of show you Etsy a little bit right here. Lee is asking, have you personally pre-checked the quality of the products that you are being fulfilled by Guten? I have. Um, so, well, actually, the sweatshirt that I have on right now, this is them. <laughs> yeah. I'm wearing it. Okay. <laughs> So yes, um, and I do have several other prints. Uh, so I've gotten, um, actually I ordered three of their uh, gallery wrap canvases, 18 by 24s, and uh, did a, like a giveaway with them. And that way, not only did I get to see them first, but then I like to say, okay, I don't want these. Um, <laughs> and I increased uh, the number of subscribers that I had by doing that little giveaway. Thank you, great question. So uh, what I'm doing right here, I just kind of did, uh, maybe I've created a piece and I'm going on Rhode Island Red Rooster and I'm coming into Etsy with a search. So I'm gonna look for rooster artwork or maybe even rooster art. And when I do that, all these images come up. And so what I'm kind of gonna do is go through it and see what strikes me and maybe what is close to my style. And there's a couple things that I'm kind of looking into here. There one is style. Two, how many sales do they have? And that's where, and this is actually their um, uh, reviews and everything. So I particularly like this one. I kind of like the up in your face animals. And so when I look at things, <laughs> I can see right here what they're using for names. And this is actually what's referred to as keyword stuffing. So they just pack the title of the piece with all of the good stuff. And what I found with the E-Rank tool, E-Rank tool likes you to use multiple, like a long string of uh, keywords. So it's like, like this one, farm animals, um, gold rooster, um, rooster art, rooster painting. So this is getting me, me that idea of keywords. So that's one place. The other thing while I'm here is I'm, she's obviously, she or he, I'm not really sure, has a lot of sales. So this is a great person to learn from. And so I'll just kind of look, evaluate the prices in comparison and just kind of make note of them as I'm doing my research and kind of where I think my stuff might fall in line with their stuff and my competitors. And you don't want to race to the bottom, but, um, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with being the top either. Um, if, so. You're talking pricing when you say that, right? Pricing, yeah. Race to the bottom. There's different pricing models. There's different pricing um, psychological pieces to evaluate. Um, but while I'm here, I'm going to take a look at their description. And this one has a really good description that I might, you know, like feel like an artist type thing and, <laughs> and make it my own, um, you know, like, that. and just kind of evaluate it, see what else I see. But also what's handy is when I come down here, I will see explore related searches. So what this is telling me is other possible keywords that I can use. So like farm, country, chicken, chicken heart. All right, cool. So making note of all of those, and then I go to the next step of my keyword research. So once I have a list of keywords that I think are going to help drive traffic to my Etsy shop, that's when I go over to um, Uber Suggest 
And so in Uber Suggest, I enter in the keyword and then I'm going to see what's actually working well. So for example, here we got rooster art. There are a thousand um, searches a month. And Uber Suggest is free up to a point. I think it allows you maybe five searches a day. So you kind of got to be a little bit cognizant of it. Um, so anyway, this one's kind of interesting to me, this blue rooster art, 720 searches a month. So you can let's see there, maybe we can start putting some of these keywords in there that were not in Etsy so that we could drive traffic from Google. Um, and these are gonna be also great places to look when I click the search results. It's going to show me a list of websites to go look for. And this is gonna be handy because I gotta build my description and get some ideas for images. So when I go here, for example, uh, let's look at this Amazon one. You click this little thing right here and it takes you out to the website. And when I go to the Amazon, then I can see like where everybody's doing. And so this is Amazon's choice. So that might be a good one to look at. Not my style. I like this one, it's pretty. Um, but I love like these images right here. So it's easy to go in rabbit holes, by the way. <laughs> uh, so you kind of gotta bring wanna, it back. I wanna jump in there for just a second. Cause I, yeah, uh, please. When, when you were uh, showing the, the Etsy shop and the, there were comments from um, the um, the users on mm -hmm. I think it was on the previous page. There you go. Those I, I've seen this suggested many times that go to Amazon and look at what the readers are saying because you okay. might have a certain way of describing something and your your users uh, have a different way of describing it and so you can pick up new ways of saying things or, or unique ways to actually get the user language by fine like there you go there there would be something sometimes it's not going to be applicable but those comments on SD, etsy and on on amazon are gold really look oh, yeah. at, look at what the people are who are buying it and reviewing it are saying about the work and and when you find words that look like those are important i'm not using those i, I can you know, it's just a great way to glean more unique copy angles than you can come with, come up with on your own. Nice, good call. And yeah. I didn't realize they had it in Etsy. So, you know, the comments in Etsy are probably more appropriate than, than, than the ones on, uh, on Facebook because they're close to the source. I have, I have to snicker every time I see his face. I would too. <laughs> I do too. I do too. He that 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 rooster has so much personality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I mean, she's probably you know lighthearted artwork, maybe even or artwork that makes you smile. I don't know. A little bit of foghorn leghorn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that one. So uh, okay, back to Uber suggests. So Amazon. Okay, so at Amazon we can look at their description. And it's just a really good place to kind of figure out what people are saying, like kind of figure out what kind of description you want, want, want to use. And, and when you first get started in Etsy, you are basically building the process that you're going to live by. And you can reuse all this knowledge um, by creating templates in Etsy. And hopefully I'm going to get to show you that. Uh, I'm going to pop out of here. So that's kind of the, the keyword research. Key tools are Etsy, Uber Suggest, and then once you have things up, you can check it with E-Rank. And E-Rank, I think it's like five searches a day on that one too before you gotta pay. And I'll be honest, I never paid for it. Uh, uh, you wouldn't, it would be silly to pay for keyword research at this point where yeah. you're at with, you, you can glean the information you want from the free sources. And yes. you get up to the point where you're really fighting for SEO on a certain, you know, rooster art or something like that, then it's worth, worth paying for it. But that's, that's, uh, that's really advanced stuff. So what you're suggesting is perfect. <laughs> um, 
Okay, then we get into the product images. And so Etsy likes you to actually use 10 images and it'll actually put up a little message saying, please use 10 images. And in the workbook, I actually do have the, the measurements that they prefer. And it's like a 2000 by 2000 pixels. And I'm gonna show you how to do that and kind of the tools that I use for that. So when you're having to put together 10 images, it's kind of hard to think about how can I fill up 10 images? It's just a painting. Um, and so how I kind of did that is show a detailed piece, maybe kind of zoom in on a particular piece and show the sparkle that's in the crystal. Um, you can showcase features with text. So I've found that people read images before they'll read actually a description. So um, and I'll show you that here in a second. Images uh, show the shipping details. If you offer free shipping, put a little sticker type thing on your uh, image that says free shipping and then the details in the US. So <laughs> I, I, I love that idea. I think artists don't do enough to with shipping. If you if you do a really good job with your shipping, you should you should have some good high quality photographs of what it looks like because it, it, mm -hmm. it uh, it's a visual uh, way of saying, I really care about the, the quality of this, not just the artwork and that you're buying it, but that it gets to you in, in perfect condition. Oh yeah. That's what yeah. good shipping photography does for you in my opinion. Yeah, it shows that you care for sure. Um, the other thing I like to do is actually hold the piece. So you don't have to hold it like, this little thing right here. You're gonna have to do that. You can actually just physically hold it, and so they can get an idea of how big the piece is, and you know, even show that um, there's human interaction with it. Uh, that's it makes it real. There are. Um, I don't want to steal your thunder, and you may have it or not, but there there are uh, mock-ups that you can sometimes either pay for or free where you actually have it's a a, a model holding a blank something yeah. <laughs> and then they'll tell you that you need an image that's a 366 wide by 600 deep pixels and you upload that image and it'll pop it right into the model's hands so it's a, depending on what you know what it is you can look for um mock-ups that will allow you to take stock photography and customize it with your artwork. I'm actually gonna show you guys that here in a second. Like I said, I'm stealing your thunder, sorry about no, that. No, you're good. You're just like leading the way. It's awesome. Okay. So <laughs> um, another way that I kind of just take up a image is I put a thank you statement. So it's like a really pretty image saying, thank you for purchasing from me as a small business owner, you just made my day. And um, but thank you, because it it's just basically saying this is not a big box store. You are making a difference in my life. Thank you. Wow. Um, and then a product display and actually a setting, and that's what we're really going to play with. So I'm going to show you some tools for product images and tips. So there are actually four tip four tools that I've played with, and um, one is like you can actually take the pictures yourself. This works great. You can do it with your phone. It's a simple setup. But the problem is, is like if you created a um, a series of paintings, like I did, of um, unicorns, animals, and it goes great in a nursery. I don't have a nursery, and so to actually, I would have to go knock on somebody's door and go, "Hey, can I take some pictures in your nursery?" and be all weird for them. So that's when we get into something else. Um, Etsy actually has a mock-up editor. It's seven dollars a month, and it's integrated with XC. It's drag and drop. Um, it's limited in its pre-made design. So I did play with this one for a little bit. I can tell you, I'm not a fan. Um, I wouldn't waste your money on it. That's probably like two slides later, but I'm telling you right now, don't bother. Uh, <laughs> you can try it, but my opinion, these next two are probably the best. Um, Canva, you can use the free version. And I used, the, I used to use the free version and I was on it for five years. I finally paid for it this past year because I'm like, okay, these guys really have earned my money. And, um, and I now use that. 
and the primary reason I converted to the paid for version is because they have an automatic background remover, which is a Photoshop selection tool thing. And it just made it easy. I'm with you hundred percent. I was using Canva and then I got, I bought a lifetime deal on, on stencil art and it was, I was very happy with it. And, but when I saw the, the evolution and the constant improvement of, of Canva, it's a remarkable tool. I think the pro version is easily worth the money. I, I use it practically every day, multiple times a day often. Um, and so it's easily worth the investment in the pro, in my opinion. Most definitely. Um, and in the pro version, they actually have a lot more type templates that I'm gonna show you that we can actually use. Um, the pre-made designs, so kind of one of the limitations is the pre-made designs you can choose, you just have to be a little bit careful of creating the mock-ups and choosing ones that are um, easily drag and drop your image on top of, top of, and I'll show you what I'm talking about on that one. Photoshop is uh, $9.99 a month, and with that you get other tools like Bridge, Lightroom, um, the Adobe Spark, which is kind of like a Canva competitor, but I, I like Canva better. Um, and I actually pay for both of these because I use uh, more complicated designs in Photoshop than, um, and then when I can, and my, I'll use Canva for things too. I, um, I used to do that. And then I realized that I'm only using Photoshop infrequently. And I found that, um, I can do all the things that I needed to do in Photoshop in an mm -hmm. online service called Pixlr. Pixlr.com. P -I -X -L -R it's like an online poor man's version of Photoshop. Okay. I mean, that's saving me 10 bucks a month. Um, so I'll put that in the chat too. Yeah, thank you. Photoshop alternative. Love that. All right. I made a note. Thank you. <laughs> There's another one too in the, I'll think of it in a minute. Um, I, it's on my desktop, but I can't, my brain is not functioning to tell me what it is. I'll, I'll, I'll find it and put it in the tools. I'm in the chat, but go, you go ahead and uh, keep okay. rolling here. All right. So we're going to do a little bit of a show and tell. Um, I'm going to show you what I did free version of Canva. And then I purchased a template from creative market. So this was made in Canva, uh, this whole little image. Um, I did purchase this six uh, frames in Creative Market. And that, this whole thing probably cost me about $8. And I'm gonna take you to Canva. So um, when, I think I've already got it over here. Oh, well, okay. So in here, all I have to do is go to my uploads and I like drag and drop things in here. And scroll. I use this a lot, guys. Um, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I like now that they have the folders. Um, yeah. So you can just, you know, if you have brand things or you're working on, you can put a folder for roosters, whatever you want. It just helps you organize stuff. So, um, yeah, I haven't used any of that yet. <laughs> so, um, Only as good as you use it, but yeah. Yeah. So like I uploaded my image here. And so all I have to do is click it and then kind of bring it in here. And now I've got a nice little mock-up. So that one I like. This image right here, I actually grabbed off of Pixabay. And I can do the same thing. And Pixabay is free as well. And then kind of put it in here. It's not as clean and probably as nice as what you can get from um, a Photoshop, you know, image. But right. most of the time I find like, you know, we, we are artists. So we kind of have an eye for like, oh, look, I can see that right there. And I can see, most people don't. They, they're right. like, oh. they're, they're, uh, they're they're enchanted by the image, not looking at the yeah. line in the, in the frame. And, so, and this is one I also bought off a creative market. And so 
Let me show you a couple things with this. So when I did this one from Creative Market. Creative my... Market is a, is a web website for uh, all things graphic design. There's practically, if you need a template or uh, yeah. fonts or, oh my goodness, backgrounds, it's, uh, it's a good way to go waste some time or have some fun uh, shopping around on Creative Market. So then I can come into here and I can just say, let's see, I'll just use this one. And then a note. So this, this painting is actually called Horse Laugh. And if I'm coming here and I don't like those colors. I'll fix it. Yeah, work with me. <laughs> My mouse is not working with me. Okay. <clears throat> The one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup it and I'm going to delete it. It's probably the group. There we go. Like that. And I'm going to put that a little bit wider. So you can really kind of play in here quite a bit. And then the other thing that I like about uh, Canva is it brings in the colors from the materials that are in here. So I can change that real quick to something like that. And I still don't like that, but I think you guys kind of get, get the gist of it. <laughs> so you can just kind of come in here and you play a lot and add in language. What I don't like about it is the paint that's behind it. And then I can add another little something in here. So this is like a six by six unframed oil painting. And I can pull that in there. Nice. He's got a lot of attitude too. It's okay. It was like <laughs> less than five minutes. So, <laughs> um, but you see all the stuff that you can do with Canva. And then if you look at this next one, this one I did in Photoshop and a creative market uh, template. And this one, it took me about an hour to do. And um, I added the language to Photoshop, used a um, Photoshop template that had the nursery in it. And then that other template that I purchased from Creative Market that had the six frames in it, I then put that in together. So this image, one image, $27 and a total of an hour to actually create. Right. And uh, if you wanted to, you could, take that image and flip it and put a whole another series in, you know, the bed would be on the left, just in Canva, you can flip things around just to give it a slightly different look or, and put some filters on it. It was all kinds of fun to different ways to make that use that same image and not have it look exactly like the one like this one. Yeah. Um, this one, uh, this is a free image that I got from uh, Pixabay. And then I took it into Canva, added my image, and added the language up above it. And that took, it was free, took about five minutes. So kind of sourcing, we, we talked already a little bit about um, one of them, and that was the uh, creative market. Right. When you're sourcing <laughs> your mock-up templates, uh, there's a couple things to kind of keep in mind. Um, and, when you purchase, there are generally three file types, uh, JPEG, PNG, and PSD. Uh, the JPEG and PNG can be uploaded to Canva, but PSD files are for Photoshop only. Um, PNG files are the handy dandy little files that actually have a clear background um, so that you can just drag and drop it and it's like a masking tool like this right here. So. Um. When you bring them in here, they're going to be colored, uh, covered. But when you bring them into Photoshop, you can pop them in right into them. A little I, bit different. I found the other, uh, the other alternative, which is even more powerful than Pixlr, is one called Photo P. It's yeah, I put it in the um, uh, chat, and it's something you download an app onto your onto your computer, but it's it interacts online, but 
it really it's it's almost identical to Photoshop and it's free. And I I want to give you one other source. I'll I'll I'll, I'll put it in the um, um, chat. It's MediaModifier.com mockup generator, and they have paid and free versions. So there, that's another place to go get free mockups. And that was Media Modifier. MediaModifier.com slash mockup hyphen generator. And it's it's in the chat, but it, I I pay the fifty bucks a year for the for the mock-up because it's they got it's it's they have a lot of really good stuff in there. I mean, you use it once or twice and you'll pay for it, I think. But, oh, I check that um, one out. Another one, you know. Yeah. Serves free sources. I like free. <laughs> um, <laughs> Me too. Uh, Creative Market, um, Avantu, and Etsy. All three of these, you can find mock-ups. And uh, you just search, search for mock-ups. So um, I'm going to show you Etsy real quick because I, I find it entertaining. Because like this right here, you know, you've probably been on Facebook and scrolling, 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 and somebody's got a cute outfit kind of laid out that they want you to buy. Well, it all started from this mock-up and or this mock-up. Uh, even I did it with uh, one of mine. I purchased the mock-up right here and added uh, my own design to it saying still a good day because I don't know how many other people, you know, dip their paintbrush into their coffee cup while they're painting. But it's still a good day because it's paint day and I'm good. Uh, but that's how they, we all create these things. It's all from mock-ups. And Pixabay, they've got a lot of good free resources. So here you can come in and just find like maybe a good background that you want to use and for um, your artwork. Like there's the free one that I grabbed. Um, I like the cat. And then, and then this, oh, this PNG Mart is another really good fun thing because like uh, Barney was saying there, you can do all sorts of things, fun stuff with this. So I had actually grabbed from PNG Mart, like these little bunnies. So one of the things I try and do with my images is put something over them because I'm worried, well, I'm just kind of cognizant that people steal. And so this way it makes it a little bit harder for them to steal my images by putting a little something in front of them. And I can take him and I can just flip them around like that's, that yeah love it that's cool yeah so, um, so can we talk about that? i like that better than a watermark yeah i do too um i'm not a big fan of watermarks so overall like take pictures yourself um canva photoshop i like that's a mock-up editor i didn't even bother showing you guys because it's just uh, ew. It's always just a, it's a waste of time. Some of their stuff that they have on there, you can actually find in uh, Pixabay. So it's not worth it. Um, I do have some more slides, but I want to be cognizant of everybody's time. I know we're at the top of the hour. So are there any other questions? Yeah, we got a small group here, but yeah, yeah, feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions if you wish or type them in the chat either way. Otherwise, um, you're welcome to um, call a um, call it a day if you or kind of wrap up or if you have the time and want to keep going. Um, we're, we're willing to stick here with you. Okay. Well, I, I, like the last major point that I kind of had, and you guys probably or, already organized with your files, but is this? So as soon as you click that little button to start your Etsy shop. You, when you go to Facebook and other things like that, you're going to start getting inundated with, um, you know, I made $100,000 in a month doing such and such on Etsy with this and buy my stuff. And um, or if I made $10,000 doing print, you know, all this other stuff. They're trying to sell you something and it's, there's really no formula to this. The formula is you. Um, you just got to be consistent in your work, consistent in your brand use strong keywords. Uh, it does take time. The first time that I created a product and product image, it and those 10 images, it took me um, at least a day. And then I 
I read somewhere that it, they want you to put five images up when you first start your shop, which makes sense because you want, you know, show stuff. So I have all of that kind of ready to go. And that way, when you do click that little box, everything's smooth, you're able to do things. And then the next day, um, you could start creating more products and your processes get defined and things get faster. I, like I said, I used to take maybe like a day just to create one. Now I can do eight products in a day because it's, it's a process. You just start getting used to it. Right. Um, I, it, of course, anytime you have a new, new process and new tools, it's going to take you more time to figure out how to use them. But mm -hmm. every time you use it, you get a little smarter on um, how to, what the process is, and maybe even the sequence of events that you go through to make sure that you do the right things first. Yeah. And it, it, it just go ahead and get it out there. You're going to mess up and it's better to mess up when you're small than mess up when you're big. <laughs> yeah. So just get started on it. Um, and just kind of level set also like my mom, she is 70, she'll be 74 five this year, I think maybe 76, something like that. And she opened up her Etsy shop last year and did the print on demand things. And I love she, it. Yeah. And she just started oil painting probably this 2018. Before that, she did a lot of China painting and like hand painting on China. And her favorite part of this entire process is painting, uh, is um, actually designing the art pieces uh, on like Christmas tree skirts. She makes Christmas tree skirts, but she does them for like Easter because <laughs> um, people do leave up their Christmas trees like all year round and they'll decorate them per season. So she has a particular niche there and she just loves designing that stuff. That's fantastic. Um, I love yeah, I mean, the riches and niches. And plus, you know, she's it's keeping her active. She's loving it and it doesn't cost her any money. <laughs> Yeah. I have a, I have a, a relatively new group that I just started a month or two ago on Facebook called Older Artist, uh -huh. and um, I invite her and anyone else who feels like older artist resonates with them to join. I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing with it, but I just want to support the idea that that just because you've reached a certain age in life doesn't mean that you're you're done or that you can't just start. Mm -hmm. um, creating art, or maybe you've already been doing this your whole life, but you reach a point where you think, am I relevant anymore? I think you're more relevant than ever as an older artist. And your, your mom's experience is a proof positive of that. Well, this is like um, one of the things that she, she painted all these little things and then she put it, designed it in Canva and using a Guten, um, Guten tells you how big to make the image size. And then she designed it and some of it. Um, Day. I, um, I, I don't want to jump ahead of you if you got more to say here, but I would like, I, I want to um, encourage people to visit your website and also to take a look at that four day artist challenge that you got there. Or there I go again, right? Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. I was just like making sure. Yeah, when you go to my website, you'll actually see at the top. Um, here, I'll show you. If you want to start taking the four day challenge, it's just right here. And it's all about, um, you know, create products, product mockups using your artwork. And I do limit you to 10 days to have access to it because I know how this is. Is it, if we, uh, when, I love it. Put a time, I, time limit on it. This is an open ended. I, if you're either going to do it or not, you know, yeah, you gotta get started. It's just, it's fun. Like this one, uh, you know, it's fun, it's exciting to see your paintings on a product. And it is especially fun when you give the gift of your artwork and exciting selling them. So, I mean, there's just like, there's no downside other than it, it takes you a little bit of time, but so does everything. <laughs> Stephanie, this, uh, as, as Shara said in the, the comments a, a moment ago that um, this has been very helpful. Thank you. Um, and she also asked uh, any other POD services that you recommend besides uh, Guten? Um, so there's also Printif, let's say I use Printify, 
Um, there, and we talk a little bit about this in our, my community too. Um, there are certain products that I wouldn't recommend. Like in Printify, I don't like their t-shirts. Um, I did try those. I liked um, Guten's because it's a, their brand is Bella that they use and it's really soft, comfortable. It's like those really nice t-shirts, like the um, life is good style t-shirts, very comfortable. Um, Guten, the only negative product that I've tried with them that I didn't like was their napkins. Um, it was badly, and I left feedback. <laughs> um, they were just poorly made. Um, like my daughter could sew better than them. Um, that's what I said. <laughs> so, um, but I, I love Guten. Um, I haven't tried, which one is it? There's Printful, I think, is another one that's very popular with Shopify, and I'm sure it has a plugin available for Etsy. Um, I have an article on my website that talks about, um, let me do a search here, um, print on demand, and lists some of the vendors, like two reasons I chose a print on demand vendor. So I actually use them over Fine Art America, and this is actually a video. I use them over Fine Art America, Zazzle, uh, one of the ladies in my community really loves Society6. Um, I've heard other uh, people in uh, Art Marketing Toolkit, I couldn't tell you who exactly right off the top of my head, who also are fans of Society6. Yeah. Let's see where it's going. I think what you're saying a little bit is um, you get advice from people like you or me or in, in your community or in mine. And, and then go from there and sign up. It's usually free and yeah, just hurt. upload some stuff and, and uh, order it um, or order from another vendor that you, who you know that they're using. You did mention yeah. up there, I see Redbubble and in that, just if you scroll up just a little bit, you got, I'm not using Fine Art America Society 6, Redbubble or whatever. So not yeah. that bad that every one of them in, in some cases, they're all using, many of them are using the same resource. Um, I know, for instance, that uh, Fine Art America, Art Storefronts, and Artspan all use a company out of North Carolina called uh, Graphic Design, I think. But you, you, you could get to their site by going to pictureframes.com. And they are just a massive operation that just, that, prints on demand, all kinds of things. And, and they're, they do it um, kind of white label for like Fine Art America. I, I know Fine Art America uses more vendors than just this operation, but. Yeah, um, Bay Photo, I think is another one. Yes, uh, yeah, were, right. And I think uh, Skyline is another one. Yeah. So but plenty of options actually, out there chose not to use those. And you can read this article if you want. I, it was primarily over profit margin um, was one of the main reasons. Well, that's a huge point. You know, if you're, yeah. if you have to give more away to Fine Art America versus, you know, Redbubble or, or uh, Guten, uh, over time, they can really add up. And if the quality yeah. is the same, why would you do that? It just, uh, it comes down to like, how much time do you want to spend on it? Like for me, I, I spent you know, a day to create eight products. Whereas, you know, with Zazzle, Redbubble and all those folks, you can just upload the image and it's just like, you know, rapid fire on all of the images or right. products. And then you select the ones that you want. But with, and so it's just kind of, where do you want to spend your time? And, you know, is it worth it to you? To me, I yeah. have the technical skills, so I'm okay with taking a little extra time. And I'm a little bit of a control freak. So I like, <laughs> I like my images look a certain way. That's and where that's the value it. of having belonging to a community like yours or mine is you can tap into the wealth of resources from lots of other people who are already using these services and have opinions about them. Yeah, it's so true. All right, well. I so, appreciate you having me on here. If you, if you guys have any questions, you know, I'm, you can email me at stephanieweaverartist at gmail.com and I'll be glad to answer. I'm kind of, uh, this is my studio. 
<laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for your time and your expertise and the quality of the information that you've given us. It's, it's fantastic. I know that um, many, many artists are going to benefit from the value of what you've presented to us today. So thanks so much. And thanks for all of you who uh, stuck with us live. And for those of you who are watching afterwards, we appreciate it. I will have a, a, a copy of this um, posted in Art Marketing Toolkit and elsewhere um, sometime very soon later today. So. I'll send you my PDF too, so they have the workbook. Yes, and we'll have the, and I'll, I'll attach the PDF or make it as available as a download in the information that I'm sending to you. So thanks again, Stephanie, you're you. a whiz. It's really fun to work with you and, and learn from you. I wish you all the best. Oh yeah, I'll if you need anything, anytime. All right, <laughs> take care. Thanks everybody. Have Bye. a great day. Bye-bye.